Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Eloy. This video is an addendum to part 5, Damage, discussing the player rules for Free League's Alien, the role-playing game. This video is part of a series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, check the playlist and start at number 1. So, I wanted to present an example of the damage and healing rules discussed in part 5, because there is a lot there and I want to try and put it together. So let's imagine Hudson and Ripley as part of a colonial marine team being attacked by xenomorphs. In the first combat round, Hudson is attacked by an alien and suffers damage. For the purposes of this example, let us assume that Hudson failed at blocking attempt and that his armor roll was insufficient to stop the damage. For the purposes of the example, let us also assume that the alien delivers the attack and goes away perhaps to attack the rest of the squad or simply disappears down a ventilator shaft. Let us say that Hudson had four health points left and suffers six points of damage from the attack. This is enough to bring Hudson to zero health. Remember, there's no negative numbers in health. Zero health and he becomes broken. He can only mumble and crawl at this point. He also receives a critical injury because you always receive a critical injury when you become broken. He also makes a panic roll because receiving a critical hit always triggers a panic roll. So we'll discuss stress and panic in the next video, but this is an important step to note because a panic roll can have effects upon yourself and your companions. For example, let us say that Hudson's panic roll result is 12 on the panic table, he screams for one round and causes every friendly character who can hear him to make an immediate panic roll of their own. Other interesting effects of a panic roll may include things that cause your companions to gain stress. Uh, for this example, let's say that Ripley is standing there, she can hear him scream and so that triggers panic in her. She rolls and gets a result of seven on the table, meaning her stress level is increased by one. Now, back to Hudson. He's broken at zero health and now has to roll on the critical injury table. This is a D66 table as we discussed, so he rolls two dice and gets a five and a three. So a 53 result on the table gives a leg artery cut critical injury result. This injury is fatal with a mod modification of negative one and it has a time limit of one turn. So meaning that if he receives no treatment, Hudson will have to make a death roll at the end of one turn. Remember, turns are minutes, so we're talking five to ten minutes, about six minutes. If he fails that roll, game over, man, game over. Uh, however, Ripley is close by and she will attempt to provide first aid to Hudson. Remember that you do not need points in the medical aid skill to attempt a roll but it, it helps if you have the skill and also if you have medical gear. Uh, her first role to save Hudson's life from the critical, her, her first role is to attempt to save Hudson's life from the fatal uh, component of the critical injury. Because of this particular critical injury, as we said in the table, it incurs a negative one modification to the medical aid role. So if she fails, then Hudson still has to make his death roll at the end of one turn. And she cannot try again unless the circumstances change. Uh, however, if there's another character there, like maybe Bishop, they could try if they were present. Uh, because of the let it ride concept that we discussed. However, if she succeeds, then Hudson uh, it does not longer have to make a death rolls. Uh, however, he is still affected by the critical injury effect, which on the table says it is to run becomes a slow action running is normally a fast action but because his leg is injured he he needs a slow action to run uh, and he's also still broken now remember that because of Hudson's scream Ripley's panic roll increases her increased her stress level so she is rolling stress dice when she makes those medical aid rolls so at any time she could be forced into a panic roll if she comes up with a one or a face hugger result on her stress dice. So this is important to, to keep in mind. We're just assuming that she's succeeding without any panic rolls. 
Um, so again, assuming she succeeds, she has now treated the fatal component of the critical injury, but she has not treated the critical injury itself. And she has not treated the broken condition. So now, Ripley attempts a second first aid role, now to treat Hudson's broken condition and help him recover health. If she fails, Hudson remains broken, only able to crawl and mumble. But she succeeds. She rolls three successes. So Hudson's health goes back up to three, because that's the number of successes she rolled. Note that Hudson is still not back up to his full starting health of four, but he's no longer broken, and now he can move and act normally. Except, of course, that he is still suffering from the effects of the critical injury, so running is a slow action for him until he heals from the critical. So, looking on the critical injury table, it says that the healing time for that specific result is D6 days. Hudson rolls a 4, so he'll be able to run again in 4 days. Now, assuming Ripley and Hudson can find a safe place to hole up and rest, Ripley can attempt to provide medical care to Hudson over the coming days. If she is able to provide care for that first day, she rolls medical aid again. If she fails, it still takes Hudson four days to be able to run again. If she succeeds, then Hudson's recovery time is halved. Now, he will be able to run again in two days. Of course, this is a best case scenario. Lots of things could have gone wrong. So that's it, guys. Uh, we'll talk about panic and stress next. Thanks for listening, and see you soon. Bye-bye.